Hello, Mark. Welcome to ICANN 60 in Abu Dhabi. Thank you, Julia. Hello, and it's great to be here. Thank you. Looking forward to this meeting very much. Thank you for taking your time for this interview. Um, could you tell me more about yourself, your background, and your current position? Well, I lead on internet governance policy for the UK government. So I work in a ministry called the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport. And my role is to represent the UK at ICANN and also in UN processes such as the Internet Governance Forum uh, and uh, also at Council of Europe and other international bodies where they're looking at internet and digital policy. What has been your experience in the GAC and its work? Well, I, uh, I first took over the UK seat uh, on the GAC in 2008. So uh, I've been working in the GAC for about nine years now. Um, and uh, I've seen ICANN go through quite some significant changes and also the GAC. Of course, we've had uh, the expansion of the domain name system with the open application round for new GTLDs. And that generated a lot of work for the GAC and I was a topic lead for several issues, uh, including rights protection mechanisms and uh, online safety and issues like that, uh, that came up when we knew there were going to be lots of applications for different kinds of top level domains, some relevant to regulated sectors. So that created a lot of uh, work for the GAC. We set up teams to do that, and it was very um, challenging and very exciting to work at, in the GAC at that time. And of course, subsequent to that, we've had the um, IANA stewardship transition. This is with the, the US government stepping away from its oversight role. So the GAC uh, had to play its part in determining how the successor regime for oversight of ICANN would be developed that would involve governments but also uh, other sectors, uh, uh, the other parts of the community at ICANN in a kind of community oversight uh, process. So that was very interesting work to be involved in that. And of course we have a whole roster of public interest issues to deal with. So the GAC has, has changed quite a bit. It's very open now. When I first joined, we met in closed session. We're very much open. Stakeholders can hear what we're talking about. And we have a lot more interaction with the other stakeholder communities, which I welcome very much. How did you learn about the policy development processes? And why did you choose the one you're most interested in? Well, of course, ICANN's policy development is very much bottom up. It's, it's driven by the stakeholders uh, and uh, the GAC always meets with uh, the other parts of ICANN during its meetings, um, including the Generic Name Supporting Organization, GNSO, which drives most of the policy development here. So we get to understand what's happening in terms of policy development through that interaction with the GNSO. And the GAC took a decision jointly with the GNSO uh, about three years ago, I think, uh, to create more opportunities for the GAC to participate in the early stages of policy development. So that means in practice, GAC representatives being able to join the working groups of policy development and uh, contribute to those discussions. So it's a big change really because in, you know, there was a little bit of problems with the previous way of working where the GAC would simply advise the board on policy development after all the policy has been developed you know, at the very last minute and that's that was unsatisfactory really so early policy development is very important and currently the work going on in particular with regard to uh, further expansion of the domain name system with the uh, subsequent procedures uh, uh, PDP working group is an area of particular interest for me uh, with the prospect of a uh, public interest issues coming up again with uh, new top level domains being created. And then secondly, um, I've always had an interest in rights protection mechanisms, intellectual property um, and the interests of the business community. Uh, and there is a rights protection mechanisms review PDP well underway. So I've joined that working group uh, to contribute uh, my suggestions comments and advice based on my consultations with our intellectual property office in the UK 
to, do, to the review of the rights protection mechanisms to make sure that they are effective uh, and if they are going to be enhanced in some way, it's very important for governments to keep track of that work. So that's why I joined that PDDP working group. Very good. And I have a last question. What would be your recommendations for GAC newcomers who wish to participate in ICANN's work, such as policy development processes or cross-community working groups? Well, um, first of all, it is an extra amount of work to contemplate. So it means following through on your commitment to, to join a working group, to join a PDP process, through having approval <coughs> within your administration for the extra time that's required to do that. Uh, you need time to participate in conference calls on a very regular basis, time to read up the papers, time to track uh, discussions online, and they can be quite extensive, and to contribute to those, time to consult with other GAC representatives who have an interest in that particular PDP's work, and also time to consult internally within, within your administration and with your own national stakeholders. We in the UK, we have uh, an advisory group of stakeholders and that's my main avenue to find out what the stakeholders think about a particular direction of the PDP or a particular issue that the PDP has, has, uh, is, is dealing with. So it's a, it's a capacity issue. It's important for GAC representatives to do this work as I said before, to engage early in policy development, but you need to find the time and have the capacity to do it. So I don't want to scare people because <laughs> it's very important work to do and it can be very exciting work to do, but you've got to be able to follow through on your commitment to do it by having the time and resource uh, uh, and capacity and your network of consultations to make your contributions as effective as possible. Right. Well, thank you very much for your time thank and you. have a very good meeting. Thanks very much. I'm looking forward to it. Thank very you. Much. Thank you.